city, the community, the people's pride. From 1870 and beyond, the city of Bulawayo holds a special place in the hearts of millions of people who call Bulawayo their home. And that has been the situation beginning from about 1870 when the city was established by King Lobengula, the second king of the Ndebele nation. Even today, a lot of people still hold the place closely in their hearts. We are talking about those who live in the city, those who live outside the city, and those who live beyond the borders and the boundaries of the country. The Ndebele nation was established by Mzilegazi Kamashobana when he left the area now known as Zululand in 1821 and headed towards the north where he eventually established a kingdom in the area now known as Matebeleland. Um, Ziliga, um, Ziligazi ruled up to 1868 when he passed on and following a two-year civil war, his son Lobengula took over as the second and the last king of the Ndebele nation. Lobengula ruled uh, from the Bulawayo in 1870 until the outbreak of the Anglo Ndebele War of 1893, which broke out in November, eventually leading to his uh, retreat towards the north and the replacement of his sovereignty by uh, the, the authority of the British South Africa Company, led by Cecil John Rhodes. A lot has been recorded in history about the Ndebele nation having been a warrior nation, which, kept, which always kept an alert in defense of its sovereignty. Uh, taking from the tra Guni tradition of uh, military prowess and alertness, the Ndebele nation at the plateau of what is present day called Zimbabwe it was actually a very highly mil militarized state, of course with many other uh, areas of interest and uh, structured in such a way as to encompass various spheres of life but its military might was the most important and the most central feature of the state which actually enabled it to survive in the new area that they had just arrived at it's having replaced and having overcome the surrounding uh, communities that they found in that area the british south africa company was very instrumental in the overthrow and the overcoming of the Ndebele state. Established and led by Cecil John Rhodes, its dream of a kept to Cairo British colony or British territory actually instigated it in all its moves towards the destruction of all kingdoms and authorities that seemed to stand on its way against the dream. The combined efforts of Cecil John Rose, the owner and the director of the British South Africa Company, and uh, his uh, assistant, Leander Star Jameson, are actually responsible and attributable to the fall and decline of the Ndebele state. Having uh, initiated programs to colonize the area now known as uh, Zimbabwe, Leander Star Jameson, commanding the pioneer column, first settled in what is now known as, as Salisbury in 1890, that was on the 12th, and the 12th of September and eventually hoisting the Union Jack on the 13th, and they ruled in Mashonaland from 1890 up to 1893. 
But having failed to find the rand or the gold belt in Marshall Island, they then turned their focus on the Ndebele and uh, having uh, triggered a war between themselves and uh, Lobengula's uh, impis or armies, they put up a very fierce fight which eventually overcame the Ndebele uh, in 1893-1894. The major battle, of course, being the battle at Gadadi in the area close to present-day David Livingstone High School. The Battle of Gadadi, also known as the Battle of Mbembezi, was without doubt the major battle between the British and the Ndebele. Uh, King Lobengula sent all his major arrangements in Gubo, in Bizo, in Sugamini, and many others, which confronted the, the British uh, secular forces by the area around present day David Livingstone uh, High School. Uh, major battles were fought, major, major, major incidents occurred there. The Ndebele, of course, uh, commanded by Mchana Kumalo. But uh, because of uh, the fierce British power, firepower, uh, the Ndebele suffered heavy casualties, and so did the British and all their other auxiliary forces picked up from among the Shona and among the Tswana meant to augment the British uh, forces. So the Ndebele actually suffered a major uh, a casualties, as I have already said. And with that defeat, King Lobengula realized that uh, his resistance of British power was going to be very restricted and limited. So he set fire to his capital in Bulawayo, and then he retreated towards the north, where he was uh, pursued by the, the combined forces under Alan Wilson as well as uh, Major Forbes. Of course, we know the story of how Alan Wilson uh, followed closely until uh, beyond the Shanghani River, the Ndebele was able to overcome the Alan Wilson patrol, that was a British uh, contingent, wiping out every one of them and leaving no survivor. And that was the major victory of the Ndebele, that was a major battle in which the Ndebele scored victory even as they were retreating uh, from the fierce British power under the command of uh, Alan Forbes, so Alan Wilson rather. Following the, dis the disappearance of King Lobengula after the Pupu battles beyond the Shangani, the Ndebele were left without a clear leader. It was then that uh, Lobengula's royal wife, Inkosigas Lozikei Lolo, uh, became the rallying point and the center of authority as a regent to the king that had just uh, gone missing. And it was under the authority and the command and the organizational prowess of Inkosigas Los Lodro that the Ndebele were able to launch a, 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 a retaliatory attack, a form of resistance, against the British in 1896. That was the war known as Impiyeshoga Elibomvu, recorded in some, in some uh, literature as Umvugela Wamandebele or Imfazwe. That was the war of 1896. The role of uh, Inkosika's Los Keitlo in this battle has been recorded in some books and to the extent that this woman was instrumental, there is a clear demonstration of uh, the importance of women, the role of women in the Ndebele state. So that's how you come to realize that some of the claims about the patriarchal nature of the Ndebele's community 
and the, all those claims about the exclusion of women in the in leadership position and authority positions is misleading and unfounded because Queen Losgay, as she later on became known, was very instrumental in keeping the Ndebele community and the Ndebele nation together right until her passing away in 1919. Uh, this Queen Losgay uh, had actually been established, I mean, staying at a place known then as the Queen's Scroll, but no, known nowadays as Inkosugazi area, where she helped to establish Inkosugazi Primary School and continued to lead the community up to uh, 1918, as I have already indicated. Following the overthrow of the Ndebele Kingdom and uh, the old Ndebele settlement, the, Ndebele, the Bulawayo settlement, which had served as Lobengula's capital, the British colonial um, agents went on to establish a modern city called Bulawayo. That is the city that has expanded to cover more than a million, to, to, in, to, to, to house more than a million people who call Bulawayo their home. The major features or major main made landmarks in the city of Bulawayo are those boilers of uh, the Bulawayo Power Company, uh, whose construction was conducted between 1947 and 1958 to mark the, the, the you know, the very conspicuous uh, six boilers where there was always smoke coming out, earning the city the nickname Kontutuziatuna, which were a feature really of the Bulawayo Power Company. And then the railway building, the railways building, which happens to be the tallest building in that country, rather in that city of Bulawayo, as well as the tower block, which is the administrative center of the city of Bulawayo. Those are the main features of the city of Bulawayo. The story of Bulawayo will not be complete without the mention of the Bulawayo High Court, a magnificent building um, located at, uh, along 9th Avenue, this is the city, rather this is the building that marks the seat of justice within the city. That is Bulawayo's magnificent high court. Mbelo Hospital has, it plays a very important role in the health of the people in the community. It is the referral center, health referral center for all the communities in Matebeleland, as well as the people around, the communities around Midlands and the Masringo region. Many have been born at Mpilo Hospital. Of course, many have also died at Mpilo Hospital. But this place, this hospital, is actually at the center of the hop for the people in Matabalelen specifically. When traveling into or out of uh, the city of Bulawayo, you either use the Joshua Mkabugo International Airport, which uh, has departure and arrival lounges for international as well as national air travel. There's also a Rinkini bus terminus, which is located at uh, Mziligazi, 
that is the area that is the bus terminus that has been the radial point to all the destinations in Matabel and beyond. Babafield Stadium, also known as Emakumeni, is the home of Highlanders Football Club, which is the most popular football club in the city of Bulawayo and the surrounding Matabeland areas. Highlanders Football Club was established in 1926 by the grandsons of King Lobenhula, and that is the reason why they wear the black and white colors, because those were the regimental colors of, of, of worn by Lopengula's regiment, Amawaba. Highlanders Football Club have continued to play a cementing role in the community, serving as the one thing that keeps the Bulawayo community together. As, have, as having been formed by the grandsons of, of the Ndebele King, the royal origins of Highlanders Football Club continue even today to bring that common, that sense of oneness among the people of Matebeleland. Without doubt, the most prolific leader in modern times to come out of Bulawayo is Joshua, Dr. Joshua Mkabugo Kanyongolo This is the man affectionately known as Father Zimbabwe because he is the man who led and established the anti-colonial, that is the liberation movement, and forming quite a number of political parties such as uh, the National Democratic Party, the Zimbabwe African People's Union, and launching the liberation struggle under the auspices of Zipra. Joshua Nkomo is the man credited with uh, the liberation of Zimbabwe from colonial uh, administration. Of course, ably assisted by Dr. Tumiso Dabengwa. Dabengwa was uh, at the height of, 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 the, of the military offensive against the Smith regime. Dabengwa was the chief of intelligence for Zipra. Whilst uh, the, the Zipra was commanded by quite a number of people, among them, of course, Jason Ziapapamoyo, who passed on, was succeeded by Alfred Nikita Mangena, and later on succeeded by Lookout Masu, who, together with Dumiso Dabengwawe, arrested by the ZANU PF government in 1982 and held without trial until 1986, even as the courts of Zimbabwe had declared that they were free because they had been discharged of any of all the criminal charges laid against them in connection with a so-called armed insurrection or attempts to overthrow the government of Zimbabwe. The Hillside Teachers College, located along Cecil Avenue in Hillside, has been a very important institution of learning in the city of Bulawayo, previously known as the Teachers College. This institution has trained a number, numerous uh, high school or secondary school teachers in various disciplines ranging from history to English to Isindebele, mathematics to science, different kinds of sciences, physics, chemistry, and biology, also in physical education, as well as in other very, very critical disciplines of learning. 
this uh, institution continues to be very relevant to the community of Bulawayo and beyond. The early 1990s saw the development of the National University of Science and Technology, NAST, as the first university in the Matabeleland region. This university has trained and taught people in various disciplines. Men and women have gone through this institution who have been very instrumental in the development not only of their own country, but serve as diligent and skilled workforce and think tanks all over the world. Of course, these colleges and universities will not thrive unless they are fed by secondary schools and primary schools in the community. Mpopoma High School is one of those old and established high schools in the city of Bulawayo. It has actually been a household name for quite a while since its establishment in 1959. This school is located in the suburb of Mpopoma, that is in the western common age of Bulawayo. The community of Bulawayo is very diverse. It consists of people of various ethnic groups as well as various racial groups. The predominant language is Isindebele, though we have people coming from uh, Plum Tree Kalanga speaking communities who speak Isikalanga. And then there's also people coming from the Gwanda area who speak Sutu. Then there is Venda from the Bait Bridge area. There's also from the north and the western side uh, languages such as uh, Nambia as well as Stonga. There is also a large community that speaks Isishona. The role of arts in keeping the Bulawayo community intact and active cannot be underestimated. Love More Majaivana is without doubt the most popular and the most successful musician to come out of Bulawayo. Though currently based in the United States of America, his songs continue to be played even long after he stopped actively producing music. What about the world of uh, acting and drama? This story will not be complete without the mention of Continue Loving Mlanga, the man who has been very instrumental in the establishment of Amakosi Theatre production. Without doubt, Konti Mtlanga has been the brains and has been the mastermind behind most of the artistic work and development that has taken place in the city of Bulawayo and the surrounding Machiavelliland communities in general. We have had entertainers ranging from as far back as the early 1980s after independence with Solomon Skuza and his Kalanga music, uh, right through with uh, Ezra Chisasbanda, who is by far the most popular uh, uh, disc jockey or DJ, as well as entertainer to be groomed and to be raised in the city of Bulawayo. Even today, he continues to broadcast independently via the social media platforms such as Facebook and others. One of the recent uh, acts 
to emerge from Bulawayo and the Matavalan region is an actor, music composer, and music performer, a man who calls himself Skobo Kobo Madlela, the man famously known for his ex. Wherever he performs, he carries his ex. Yes, that is Mutusi Bashiman and This man has been very instrumental in promoting the arts generally, music. He's been singing his own music as well as promoting and producing other musicians. His contribution into the development of uh, arts in Matevela land has by far been very, very phenomenal. Well, as for the world of politics, there is a man called Mkonisi Moyo. Mr. Mkonisi Moyo pursues a different kind of politics from that pursued by the rest of the politicians. Being the president of Mpagazi Republic Party, Mr. Moyo believes that Matebele Land and Mashona Land are two unique and distinct communities who must be allowed to pursue different and independent destinies. Partly believing that Matebele Land is unable to develop because of the stifling programs uh, being coordinated from Harare, Mr. Mkondisi Moyo believes in an independent Matebele Land, which would be free to run its own affairs, believing that Matebele Land and Mashona Land communities would do well as neighbors rather than as members of a unitary party. Certainly, there are divided views in the community regarding the wisdom and the viability of Mr. Mkondis Moyo's idea. But what is admitted, admittable is that in recent years, more and more people in Matebele, and particularly the younger generation, are beginning to agree with Mr. Mkondis Moyo that Matebele land will not see any development unless and until it is given freedom and independence from the Harare administration. The resurgence of Matebele on Debele particularism has actually been fueled by the identification of Bulelani Lopengula Kumalo, who was due for coronation had it not been for the resistance of the move by the government of Zimbabwe. Inkos Ubulelani Kumalo is the cementing point for many among the Matebeles, particularly those of Nguni origin and Nguni stock, who still believe in the beauty of a monarch. Of course, those who are trying to who are promoting the, 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 the Ndebele monarch are divided in terms of opinion on what role a monarch should play in the modern uh, society. But without doubt, Mr. Bulelani Kumalo in Kosia Mandebele continues to receive recognition and respect among a great section of the Matebele community, which places him at the center of the discourse about the future of Matebele land. Despite of all the challenges and the problems that the people of Matebele land have continued to face since the overthrow of their state in 1893, there seems to be a lot that holds them together. They, seem to sh they still seem to share a lot which they find to be so dear to their hearts as a result, the nation has not disintegrated in spite of some of these concerted efforts to destroy it, uh, as one would readily think of uh, incidents such as Gukura Wundi, 
which resulted in the slaughter of 20,000 Ndebele-speaking people under the authority of uh, the ZANU-PF-led government in the 1980s. The Ndebele community is very resilient, if one could say, because in spite of the challenges, the people continue to stay together and to hope together and to dream together. Thank you very much for being part of uh, this presentation. My name is Pilani Litanda Nendlovu, and I'll continue to provide you with more of these uh, documentaries. Thank you very much for your time.